Hi, Jim. Did you hear me brag a bit about you? You're, you're so sweet. I look forward to getting all, all brainy with you, Tamsin. Thank I you. love it. I love it. I, I really mean it, though. You know, I, I you know, I'm I read constantly, but this is a book that's on my nightstand because it's a it's it's the kind of book you can flip to constantly and learn something. Yeah. But um, as you know, we always say these. So I turned fifty. Hmm. Confession, as you know, and I felt like, oh my gosh, I feel like I keep forgetting things, or I or I, I'm saying to myself, I'm forgetting things, and I went. I don't want to be that person. I want to figure this out now and yeah. and uh, get some answers to all these questions. So I figure we could talk about it and figure out how to to keep our brain ageless, if that's possible. And I think it is. It it, uh, it absolutely is. And uh, just congratulations on making that decision. <laughs> and for everybody who's here who's also making that decision with you, I think we're all on this journey to be able to realize and reveal you know our fullest potential. Mm -hmm. you know, limitless is not about being perfect. It's about advancing and progressing beyond what you believe is possible. And the truth is our brains get, get older, but they could also in some ways grow better. And so that's the exciting news. We've discovered right. more about the human brain in the past 10 years than the previous thousand years combined. And we find is we're grossly underestimating our own capabilities. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of hope. And so, so what can you do about that on a daily basis? Cause I think, you know, I've read a, a lot of different things and I do do one thing, which I, I find very interesting. So when I come home, Mm -hmm. And I, when I take off my makeup, I always use my right hand. I'm a, a right-handed person. And I realize I've never used my left hand for anything. You talk about switching your hands up when you do brushing your teeth, but I'm doing it now washing my face. And I realize it's not that easy, you know, in your, you get trained in different habits. So I figure you probably have some thoughts about, you know, what people can do to keep sharp. I mean, that's really what yeah. we're talking about, right? This is, yeah. This is something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, my, my, my parents worked a lot um, when I was growing up as a child, and my my grandmother was my primary caregiver. And when I was having when I had my brain injury and I had my learning challenges that came from it, um, she was also suffering from early stages of dementia. And so, where at the age of six she was taking care of me, shortly afterwards I felt like I was taking care of her. And so, this is something that you know we even donated all the proceeds of our book to to uh, studying the female brain specifically wow. and also education because women are twice as likely to experience Alzheimer's than, than men. But here's the thing, there's no such thing as a good or bad memory. There's a trained memory and an untrained memory that we could grow older, but in a lot of ways we could grow wiser. So regardless of our age or our background, our gender, our history, our IQ, there's, there's a lot of hope and there's a lot of things that we could do. And there was a study actually done on longevity. It was on the cover of Time Magazine. They, they looked at these women who were living 80, 90 and above, this community of nuns, and they wanted to find out what was the key to longevity. And they said half of it had to do with their emotional faith and gratitude, but the other half, they were lifelong learners. They were learning every single day. They were challenging themselves every single day mentally. And because of it, it added years to their life, but not only that, life to their years and so that novelty is so very important it's just like if you want to build your muscles you give it novelty you, you work it out and then you give it nutrition and the brain is the same way so that's how you expand your your mental muscles when you do when you talk about lifelong learning um you know i i get i read a lot as i said but i feel like there's so many ways to or so many ways to learn now right there are master classes there's mind valley there there's so many different ways to do that what do you recommend um so you don't get so overwhelmed right that yeah. you don't get anything done of course of course I, mean, I think the most important thing is to keep the most important thing the most important thing in in life and one of those things is just making things simple we were talking about it before we started this is that part of it is is making it doable and so i think it's important for us to schedule those things because if we don't schedule those things in our calendar i think one of the most uh, most effective powerful productivity and performance tools we have is our calendar but sometimes we will schedule meetings with with work or or things with family but we won't schedule our own personal growth and um for me, my favorite activity out of all of them really is exactly what you said, it's reading. Reading is to your mind what exercise is to your body. Reading is to your mind what exercise is to your body. And scheduling that 10 minutes or 15 minutes a day to just log off of your, your devices and pick up, a, pick up a book and sit back and, and, you know, and challenge your, your brain in new ways. 
I, I, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And I, and I think, and I love it because then you're executing some of those things too. Um, so you get up in the morning and yeah. it, we've, we've talked about this before, but talk about your routine in the morning because I'm not, I'm not quite so good. I mean, I sleep yeah. on my phone. I, <laughs> I, I, I interviewed Ariana Huffington a long time ago. And she gave me this bed to put your, um, to put your devices in, you know, and you tuck them in and I went, Oh no no no! They're right. In, they're right in the bed with me. But it's not a good habit. And yeah. I know you have a habit of not not doing that first thing in the morning. Do you? Think yeah. I mean, when we're thinking about what's coming up next, part of it is, you know, there's a greater version of ourself, you know, and so there's a version of ourself we haven't met yet. And the goal is to show up each day, and it's not to be perfect. Sometimes, you know, studies done on self compassion, sometimes we, we, we beat ourselves up because we don't stick to an exercise routine or eat something that's bad for us. And it's better to be kind with ourselves. So just be forgiving. Um, when it comes to our, our routines, I believe first you create your habits, then your habits create you. And if you want to win the day, it's important to win that first hour of the day. Now, it can be challenging, you know, with demands of work, with, with family and everything, but you don't have to do everything perfectly. But there's some things I do suggest uh, experimenting for yourself. So the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I'll take a moment and I will just uh, remember my dreams. And it's kind of a fun exercise I do. I just write them down. It's one of the things you could do because your brain doesn't shut off at night and it's more active in some ways. And what is it doing? It's, it's solving problems. I mean, do you, did you know Mary Shelley came up with the idea for Frankenstein in her dream? I mean, what are we dreaming oh, late at night? And so take a moment and just write down your dreams, capture that. Um, the second thing you could do when you wake up in the morning, I would challenge everybody is to, is to make your bed. And I know this is something some people do, mm -hmm. but how you do anything is how you do everything. And the brain, talk about the longevity of the brain and being created in nature's mind, it loves cleanliness. Your external world is a reflection of your internal world. And you know when you clean your desktop, you have clarity of thought. You feel more organized a little bit. Well, making your bed only takes a couple minutes, but it's a great way to set, your up, set yourself up for success. And how great does it feel to come back at night to well-made bed? You come back full circle <laughs> to success. No. There's no question about it. When we talk about uh, ageless and we also talk about kind of what's coming up next, there's a lot of fear involved in that. Yeah. And you and I have discussed it before that, uh, that unknown. Yeah. Story, right. And it, and that can clutter your brain. And I think that that can, um, that's difficult. That's it's difficult to, to figure out what to do in the moment, more or less to figure out what to do in the future. And, and I went through it. I think the last three months of uh, last three months before I, I said, okay, I'm going to go looking for answers. I felt a little cluttered in my mind and I was making lists and making lists and mm -hmm. not, not completing anything on them, but just yeah. continuing to make them. And I went, you know what? I've got to get rid of all of that. Cause it's not, it's not helping me. Yeah, I, I think a lot of us have a growing to-do list, and you know, and but do we also have a to-be list? You know, imagine that as part of your morning routine, you also check in, and you don't just look at all the things you have to do, but just ask yourself, who do I want to be today? Because often when we're faced with a dilemma or a decision or a difficult situation, we ask, what do I need to do? And you rush to that. But if you take a moment and take a breath, and who do I need to be today? Who do I need to be at this moment? Because if you choose to become compassionate, your behavior is going to follow naturally. You'll naturally do loving things, for instance. Or if you decide to be a little bit more bold and playful, the behaviors will come from that also as well. So as part of my morning routine, instead of looking at the 200 things I have on my to-do list, I'll actually write down three things personally and three things professionally okay. that if I was to forecast and use my mind and say, at the end of the day, if somebody asked me how my day was, I want to say, I did it, mate. It would tell you, I won today. I crushed it. Then I say, what had to happen in order for, for me to feel that way? And then I make that my list. And, you know, touching your phone is, is, is absolutely okay. It's just, you know, don't do it out of the, the default because it rewires our brain for distraction. It rewires our brain to be reactive all the time. I think, uh, you know, sometimes we can make better decisions for ourselves, like just hydrate in the morning, have a, have a glass of water. Self-care is not selfish. And part of self-care is falling in love with the person in the mirror who's been through so much, but is still is still standing, right? And wow. when you take care of yourself, even we can lose up to a pound of water just through respiration and perspiration through sleep, but staying hydrated will boost your thinking speed and your reaction time 30%. And that can give you an incredible advantage when you need to get through your day. And you know, I want to be one of those people that is not saying constantly, like, I can't remember what I did. I can't, mm. you know, and, and I think that that's a big deal. And I had noticed recently, yeah. last year or two, that I was, little more forgetful and I've had to practice 
being present, mm -hmm. paying attention just a little bit more than maybe I had to do when I was you know, 25 years old. And it's great because through through also through age and not just chronological age, but also the age of our you know our minds, our hearts. There is a wisdom experience where it's just you know you it it gives you this uh, this this level of confidence knowing that we have this history to pull on that we've been able to get through this and we'll be able to get through the, the next thing also as well. But um, when it comes to things like you know our experience to be able to grow to go to to new levels, I would say. If you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. When people come to me and they say, oh, a senior mom's coming too early, yeah, I'm, dumb. I'm getting too old, I, I have a horrible memory, I say, stop. If you fight for your limits, you get to keep them. Your brain is like a supercomputer and your self-talk is a program that will run. So if you tell yourself, I'm not good at remembering names, you won't remember the name of the next person you meet because you program your supercomputer not to. And that's not if you I say this, if you have one negative thought it ruins your life any more than even that one donut will, but it's just to be conscious and self-aware. I think self-awareness is a superpower. In, in my book, Limitless, I have a quote from a French philosopher and he says, life is the C between B and D. Life is C between B and D. B is birth, D is death, C is choice. And I believe difficult times, they can define us, difficult times can diminish us, or difficult times can develop us. Ultimately, we decide. And one of the things I would encourage people to do, not just monitor your self-talk, there was an interesting experiment, talk about um, anti-aging and longevity, mm -hmm. where um, by a Harvard, um, Dr. Ellen Langer, back in uh, 1979, went to a nursing facility and. Uh, where there were a number of seniors and said, this is not the, the best place, you know, most engaging uh, environment to spend, you, you know, your final years. Okay. And she took eight of these individuals out and put them into another building and decorated it as if it was 20 years earlier. So instead of 1970. Oh, wow, that's very cool. Yes, it looked like 1959. And so took out, you know, put in a black and white television, put 1959 programming there, put a Time magazine there from 1959, and gave, and gave these eight individuals, they tested them before they went into the this new living quarters. Um, they tested their, their senses, their sense of sight, their eyesight, their sense of hearing, their physical strength, also cognitive tests like focus and memory. They took pictures of them. And as they were walking into the building, some of them had canes and, you know, what you can imagine, you know, and they went into the building and they said one simple instruction. I want you to pretend for the next week that it is 20 years earlier. Pretend it's 1959. And they took out all the mirrors so they couldn't even see themselves. Anyway, fast forward seven days, they follow up and the, this group of individuals, they had new life in them. They, they tested them and they actually had their sense of sight and sense of hearing were markably better. They yeah. were physically stronger after just seven days. And also when it came to their focus and their memory was actually enhanced, they, they scored better in cognitive activity. And they actually took a second picture of them before and after. And they showed these before and after in front of a focus group. And they asked the focus group one simple question, which is the younger version of, of this person? And they all chose the latter photo. And so it's so interesting. Yeah. And this, they call this study the counterclockwise study at, in, in Harvard, that that's the power of human imagination. That's the power of our thoughts and our self-talk and our belief. You know, it's kind of a cliche, but this quote, if you believe you can or believe you can't, either way, you're right by Henry Ford. But it really is when we talk about age, it's more of a mindset and also a heart set. Well, it's just, it's fascinating, though, when you talk about that, because, you know, you and, you, and there's example over and over. And I had never heard of that, but that is great. I'm going to look that up and, and, and yeah. learn about it. I love it. I always learn so much from you. I could talk to you for a very long time. I appreciate um, that. If people want to find you and um, and want to find Limitless, can you just tell them where to find you? Yeah. I know a lot of things going on in a podcast, too. Certainly. If people want more brain tips, simple things they could do to improve their memory so they, they could uh, be unstoppable and limitless, regardless of their age, uh, to remember names, to be able to have focus, to be able to find out what the best brain foods are. Two places. Um, you mentioned our podcast. It's one of the top education shows on iTunes in the world. And you can just search my name in your podcast app or go to quickbrain, K-W-I-K, brain.com. And then also it's it's Limitless at limitlessbook.com. You could um, not only get the book, but you could also um, enter your receipt to receive a 10-day speed reading memory program as my gift, a tutorial to yeah. kind of walk you through the book. It's kind of like an online book club, if you will. And, um, and, and, and certainly on social media, I would challenge everybody right now to take a screenshot of this conversation and, and tag Tamsin, tag myself at Jim Quick and post just one thing you're going to do different to love your brain.
one thing and I'll repost some of my favorites and I'll actually gift a copy of the book to one person who does that. Oh, and thank you. When you, you know, when you hear something, you get to learn it, but when you share it, you get to learn it again. And I feel like when people share it with um, their friends and their families, then uh, the world's better off. I, I think so too. And I, I, I think you're, you know, uh, everything that you talk about are actually things you can do. You know, I don't have to go buy something new to do one of your, you know, uh, you know, one of the methods or one of your tips. I don't have to prepare for six weeks. I can get up tomorrow morning or tonight or, yeah. you know, and, and just, and just do it. And I think that that means a lot and that, and that makes you, um, you know, try to figure out who you want to be. Yeah. I think that's, that, that's really it for fulfillment, having the curiosity to know yourself you know, and that's why sometimes we go to talk therapy or we, we write in journals, we do those things, self-awareness. But then, you know, as we're discovering who we are, having also the courage to be that person also as well. I get to spend a lot of time in senior centers helping um, them polish off their memories because of, you know, my, my loss with my grandmother. And there's so much wisdom there, but also sometimes there's a little bit of regret, you know, some unfulfilled past. And um, my, my message for anyone who's watching this, my final words would be, you know, at some point we're going to take our final breaths. It's not a, a fun conversation, but in that moment, none of our fears or other people's opinions, none of their expectations are going to matter. When you're thinking about what's coming up next, what's going to really matter at that time is, is how you lived, how you laughed, how you loved, you know, how you learned and, you know, let's come from that place. Thank you so much.